Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. I just woke up. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Judgment Aura Paladin Guide. On top of that, I'm going to give you guys a loot filter beam down below in the comments and a LE Tools Builder. I was unable to provide these before because LE Tools was down for almost two days during the whole like really bad server maintenance because they're kind of tied together. Um, so don't worry, we'll have it beamed to you as well. If you're curious, you can always go into my chat on Twitch and you can use the LE Build command. And I'll provide snapshots every day um, of my loot filter and my character. Okay, with that being said, uh, we're level 83 right now. We're pushing empowered monoliths. So just to kind of show you guys, you know, we're, we're kind of just started this. So we're like 119 corruption. Basically, this is kind of like if I had to guess in terms of PoE terms, this is sort of like your lower level red tier maps. Um, the build is working fantastic. It's a little bit squishy right now, but primarily because I haven't really focused much on defensive layers, pretty much just exploring the game right now. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how it works. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Now remember, if you're curious on this build, you should really go check out the previous content on kind of exploring, talking about the build. Right now, I'm just going to show you some gameplay because it has been nerfed a little bit just to show you guys everything still works. Okay. Well, it's a little rubber bandy right now. I'm not sure what's going on here. Ooh, rude. So the basic gameplay here is you're going to judgment, then you're going to rewind back in time with volatile reversal, and then you're going to lunge to go back to where you were. So one, two, and then lunge basically. It can be a little bit odd of a play style, I'm not going to lie. This is why I kind of opted out to scale uh, as much duration on my judgment as I could. But the thing is, even though the play style may feel a little bit weird, bossing actually doesn't feel nearly as bad in my opinion, primarily because for bossing, you're not really moving uh, long distances. You're kind of just like jumping around a little bit. So when you're going back in time, you're not like flying across the screen, right? Oh wait, I'm supposed to go over here? Okay. Mm, okay. Still need to work on my filter a bit. I sort of just like update it as I go. So I think later today I'm probably going to turn off all rare items because I don't really look at rare items at this point. Pretty much just look for the affixes on my filter slash uh, exalted items. Since exalted items, which are the purple ones, have the highest... Uh, potential to craft on so we'll go ahead and do another one here real fast honestly the single target of this build is more of the highlight kind of funny because with an rf build it's typically the exact opposite but this build does not struggle at all single target and if you look at my cooldowns here between my volatile reversal and my judgment they're actually like almost perfectly synced up so when I'm fighting on a boss, my damage uptime is very high. The only thing I will state is Volatile Reversal, which is this one here. Most of its damage comes from the debuff, and the debuff has only a 4 second window. So the cooldown right now on it is 6.1 seconds. So it's like, what, like 80% damage uptime, somewhere around there? But still, even without the debuff, it does a considerable amount of damage. Because the debuff makes it stronger, right? It's a bit laggy for me today. I wonder what's going on. Oh, that hurt a lot. Okay. <clears throat> Still need to uh, get my crit avoidance or crit damage reduction. I don't have any of that yet. That's kind of like a big deal. And then got to stack more HP, endurance, and armor. Res are good, but the res I don't really care about. Like, the res is important, but really I need to get more uh, armor. I got to get the better base type, so. I also want to get some more movement speed if possible. That's nice. Okay. 
So that's pretty much the character. I'm going to talk a little bit about my gear here. Uh, remember, I'm not going to go too much into the skill tree and stuff because this will all be linked in the builder. So I'm going to try to talk about how you can get this build running smoother. So again, one of the one of the prime things here for people is you need to get your volatile reversal cooldown as low as possible so that when you do this, it doesn't feel clunky and you don't have as much of a delay time. Because you're pretty much not going to volatile, you're not going to judgment until your volatile reversal comes back. Because of the judgment, we're taking pious offering. And if you look at the MP pool, we're pretty much dumping the whole MP pool. And if you get into a scenario where you judgment without using volatile reversal, then your MP is kind of dicked and your damage kind of goes to the shitter. But you could still clear like this, it's just your boss damage is going to be a lot lower. So here's what I'm currently doing to combat that. Number one, in your volatile reversal, you want to make sure you grab all the CDR first. I mean, you can you can take the damage first if you want to, but the cooldown recovery makes the build feel a lot better. So I recommend going like Time Lost Vitality, Time Sap, Traveler's Fatigue, because this makes it feel much better. Furthermore, on the actual uh, Sentinel Tree over here, you have Valiant Charge which actually gives 30% cooldown recovery for not only your lunge, but also your volatile reversal. This is another big one. On top of that, I'm gonna turn the attention to three pieces of gear here. So number one, I am running double opal rings. Um, cooldown recovery works out really well for volatile reversal, right? On top of this, cooldown recovery can feel nice for your lunge as well and your holy aura. I don't typically press the holy aura a lot, but there's honestly no reason for me not to. It's just an extra button press in the rotation and then on boots i'm running a cooldown recovery affix so one two three i'm also using this helmet base but i'm totally fine like if i take off this helmet my cooldown on volatile reversal is like 0.4 seconds longer so i don't actually need this helmet i'd rather pivot into a like a tankier base so that's pretty much required to make it feel pretty smooth Another thing that's really important with this build is right over here on Relic Slots, this is where you're able to find Judgment. Um, the reason you want to really prioritize Judgment is because getting plus to your level of skill allows you to put more points in it. With Judgment, that's basically more quality of life or multipliers. You can see here, I favor to take extra duration to make the build feel smoother, along with maximum AoE to also make it feel smoother. Uh, and then if I get extra points, I'll put them into Flaming Soul, um, since they are multiplicative with like pious offering. So I think I'd rather maybe max flaming soul before maxing pious offering. Uh, not hundred percent sure. I have, to, I have to test on a training dummy, but servers are still a little bit wonky. So I haven't really gotten to do that. Other than that, I'll just go ahead and kind of like flash my gear for you guys. If you wanted to go ahead and see, uh, I guess since I was talking about being like a little bit tankier, I'll kind of talk about uh, sort of what I want to pivot into. So. If you look at my res, my res is definitely more than fine. Like, most of them are way too high. Since I'm also getting to the point now with uh, Empowered Monoliths, the blessings are going to get a lot stronger. So, for example, on this helmet, this helmet is actually pretty good. It's just the prefixes are not really very good. The suffixes, the reduced damage taken from crit is okay. The increased health is amazing. Um, the problem with the reduced damage from crit is, you know, that affix by itself doesn't really do much. But there are these new helmet bases here at 85 that have like 80% reduced damage taken from crit, I mean, that alone would already almost solve the critical damage issue. So just something like this would already be massive for survivability, not to mention the endurance threshold. Remember, as a build like this, because we cannot scale ward, we really want to pivot into a couple of factors. Stacking life, stacking endurance, stacking armor. All three of those. Endurance actually can protect you from one-shot mechanics. So for example, this states... When I go below 353 HP, a 60% damage reduction starts to apply. You would think to yourself, well, that doesn't really matter if you're at 300 HP or probably dead. But the way endurance works in this game is, say a mob were to hit me for 2000, that would normally kill me. If endurance were to protect you against the one hit, it actually will immediately take into effect, even though it's only a single hit and can save you. So I originally found a really cool shield like this, and I thought to myself, I'm going to commit to full block. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a fan of block. Like, it's kind of cool, but it's really annoying to try to get your block chance high. And I feel like the more affixes I sacrifice for block and block effectiveness, the less I'm pivoted in, pivoting into, like, endurance and health. Now, in, in the instance of this shield, it's not really much. It's just, like, 
The reduced damage taken on block would have been way better with a health roll or something else, right? I think block chance as a prefix is totally fine because I don't think there's too many prefixes I could get on a shield. But the suffixes you really want, like armor, endurance, and HP, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty confident on. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the character so far, having a lot of fun. Still got a lot of passives to go into. Since the damage is feeling a bit overkill, I'm probably going to respect like Heavenfire here and go more into uh, HP and healing effectiveness just because HP is a nice defensive layer, right? Um, yeah, overall, still pretty happy with the character. Not ready to move on to the next build yet. I still have a lot of crafting I want to do with the character. Um, but I think next character is probably going to be Aura of Decay Necromance Warlock. I, I don't really remember. It's another Righteous Fire style one. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, in the comments down below, I'm going to go ahead and link the LE Tools Builder, which is this exact character, along with the Loot Filter. Remember, the Loot Filter is tailored towards my progression right now, so it's probably best if you kind of create your own filter, and I will be making video guides, a specific video guide on making a filter because it is like the most intuitive Loot Filter I've ever seen in any game. Hats off to them by a long shot. I think last thing to pay attention to are um, idols. I have to actually do this in my filter. I haven't done it yet, but since the damage again feels really overkill on the build, I'm probably going to start dropping a few damage over time idols and subbing in double health idols. I feel like double health ones are really strong. Like this is literally giving me as much HP as like a decent piece of gear and a two idol slot. So that's definitely something I'm going to be looking into. Anyway, though, catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoy judgmenting your way through uh, the epoch, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks so much, everyone.